Hello and welcome to worship today this, on this wonderful day that the Lord has made. Welcome uh, to the worship service for this. That What is this? This is the sixth Sunday of Easter. Uh, it is Sunday, May 17th. Welcome. This is from Ordal Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Pete. I'm so glad you could join us this morning. We begin this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join with us now as we sing hymn number 579, Lord, you give the Great Commission. Thank you. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to them all give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace through Jesus Christ our savior and lord who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god now and forever amen join with us now as we sing our gospel acclamation Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All heaven and earth, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am all with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o All right, it is time for our Catechism Connection. This is the final one for the Lord's Prayer. We started way back when, I don't know, February or something, working through the Lord's Prayer, looking at each petition, going through, and kind of looking at uh, Martin Luther's explanation of the Lord's Prayer, um, of each petition, and kind of paraphrasing a little bit, trying to take that and make it sound a little more normal. And so the doxo- we are looking today at the doxology, that last line, For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is the last line. This last line of the Lord's Prayer is referred to as the doxology. A doxology is simply a, a hymn of praise. We, it's a, it's a, it can be short, it can be long. It's a hymn that is praising God, a song that we are praising God with. And interestingly enough, this, doc, this last line, it doesn't appear in Luke's version of, the, old, of the, 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 the Lord's Prayer. Remember, the Lord's Prayer appears in Mark, or not Mark, Matthew and Luke. And in Luke's version, it doesn't have this doxology. And what's even more interesting is the fact that many scholars believe it, it wasn't originally in Matthew either. What? Why are we saying it then? Well, because there were, throughout the Bible, there are these short little doxologies, these hymns of praise. And so somebody might have said, you know what, this needs a little wrap up to it. Um, so they added it in. So when we look at it, when we think of the Lord's Prayer, just about every Christian church uses it, don't they? Just about every worship service, and they use different versions of it. Um, in one form or another, it doesn't matter if you're using the old English version or the new, uh, the it doesn't matter if you're using like the King James version or the, the updated version. Um, it doesn't matter if you have the doxology or not. You go to some churches and they just end with, you know, and save us from the time of trial, deliver us from evil. And then, oh, (laughs) you can tell who the Protestants are in the room when they continue on with it. It doesn't matter what, uh, how, we, how we say it, because God hears it. We have a wonderful, a fearful, and amazing God that loves us and forgives us no matter what. And any time we are praying to God, it pleases God's ears. And when we are saying amen, we are saying yes, yes. It is going to come about just like this. That's the way Martin Luther explains it. Another way you could think about it, too, is if you're a Trekkie, uh, Jean-Luc Picard, when Captain Picard says, make it so, it's basically what we're saying when we say amen. 
And so now, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Make it so. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you from God, our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be unto you all. Amen. Perhaps we should rewind a little bit. A um, bit, little bit of trivia for you. How many Gospels are there in the Bible? Four, right? Which ones are they? Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. Yeah. Um, the funny thing is, these, the, they're not listed chronologically. They're not listed in the order that they were written. I mean, they're not even, when you look at it, they're not even in alphabetical order. Well, actually, they're in reverse alphabetical order. Um, doesn't matter how it was laid out. That's just the way it ended up being. Um, that's just the way the Bible is organized for that. For us right now, we are in what we call the season of Easter. Easter isn't just one day. It's not just one Sunday. Easter is a whole season. In fact, for us, every Sunday is kind of a mini Easter. But right now, between now and Pentecost, we celebrate the season of Easter. So Pentecost is 50 days from Easter to um, the start of Pentecost. The, the, so 50 days after Pentecost is when um, we have yeah, the Easter season. And for this Easter season, we have been reading the various, um, fr from the different Gospels, all of the different times that Jesus, the resurrected Christ, has appeared to the disciples. Now, if we think back, do you remember how Jesus appears to them in Mark? Well, he doesn't. And in fact, the Gospel of Mark, which many scholars believe is the first one, that was the first one that was written, the way, gospel, the way Mark goes is, you know, it's Easter morning. The women go there to pre prepare the body for burial. And there's a guy sitting there. There's a guy in the tomb, and he tells them that Jesus has been raised from the dead. Go and tell the disciples that Jesus is going to meet them in Galilee. Go, up, go back home, go north, and Jesus will meet you there. And so the women take off. They go back, and they tell no one, for they were afraid. That's how the, <laughs> the gospel of the Lord, that is how the gospel of Mark ends. Now, later on, the other people said, well, that's not a good ending. We need to have a little more. We have to have, we have to see Jesus. And so they added to that gospel, but the original ending, they told no one for they were afraid. And so then we went and we looked at the last gospel that had been written. Uh, they figured John was the last one written sometime after 100 A.D. Uh, got in the Gospel of John, Jesus appears to the disciples in the upper room. That's the one where he shows up and says, Peace be with you. You got anything to eat? Um, the only thing is, Thomas isn't there. I don't know, maybe Thomas was out getting something to eat, getting a pizza or something. Uh, but Thomas wasn't there, and he comes back and says, Well, I don't believe you guys that Jesus was here. And so Jesus shows up again and says, hey, you know, touch, look, see, I, it's me. And so J Thomas believes in the Lord. And then, um, then for us, we went to Emmaus. We went to the Gospel of Luke. And in that Gospel, on e the afternoon of Easter, there's, uh, we meet two guys. We meet Bob. Actually, that's not his real name. That's what I named him. And this other guy named Clopas. Who that is, unfortunately, that is actually his real name, Clopas. And these two guys are walking to a town called Emmaus. It's about seven miles from Jerusalem. And as they're walking along, they're kind of they're sad, they're upset because, well, Jesus has died. He said he was going to rise again in three days. They haven't seen it. And this stranger comes along and says, Why are you guys so sad? And they kind of look at him like, 
Have you not heard? Did you not hear that Jesus is dead? And so this guy, this stranger that they don't recognize, starts explaining to them all the different times that Jesus appears in the Scripture. And when I say Scripture, in the Old Testament. And so as they're walking along, they, Jesus, they invite Jesus to, to stay with them that night. And as, they're, as Jesus takes at, at, the, at the dinner table, Jesus takes the bread and breaks it and gives it to them and says, you know, this is my body, you know, and says blesses it and breaks it and gives it to them. And in that moment, as Jesus breaks the bread, they realize that it's Jesus. They realize that Jesus has been walking with them all this time. And the funny thing is, poof, Jesus disappears. Just like that. Oh, hey, it's Jesus. Click, he's gone. It's like, oh, seriously. So they go back and they tell the disciples. And the disciples are like, yeah, we know Peter, Peter saw him too. And then for the, uh, for the last two weeks then, we, we went back to the Gospel of John again, where the guys are out fishing. Um, they don't know what to do, so they're like, let's go fishing. And they go fishing one night. They don't get, catch anything. And this stranger appears on the shore and says, uh, you guys haven't caught anything, have you? And they're like, no, we haven't caught a thing all night. And they say, and Jesus, who they don't realize it's Jesus, but this stranger says to them, Throw your nets on the other side of the, of the boat. You know, cast your nets over to the right side of the boat, and then you'll catch fish. And well, sure enough, they do. And then they realize that it's Jesus who told them to do, to do that. And so then they go to shore and they have breakfast with Jesus. And then <clears throat> after, after breakfast last week, Jesus took Peter aside and said, you know, Peter, do you love me? Asked him not once, not twice, but three times, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, each time. And that's the, the, we concluded it with Jesus telling Peter to feed his sheep. Now I'm doing this to show you that each gospel tells the story of Jesus in its own way. Um, it's, it's not possible for us to do a nice, coherent, um, okay, this happened, this, and then this happened, they all tell the story of Jesus just <clears throat> in a little slightly different way. So now just to really make fun, hopefully we haven't completely confused you, let's look at Matthew. Now in our reading for today from Matthew, it's Easter morning. The women, they, are going to, they go to the tomb to prepare the body, but the angel of the Lord is there, tells them, hey, you know what, uh, Jesus isn't here, he's alive. Go and tell the disciples that Jesus will meet them in Galilee. And so the women, they leave, and as they're heading out, um, on the way, they meet Jesus. And they recognize him immediately, and they bow down, and they worship him. And Jesus says, you know, tell, go tell the guys, meet me up in Galilee. Now the trick, is, the funny thing, why do I say funny thing all morning? Uh, the thing is about this, Galilee is 70 miles north of Jerusalem. And they didn't have cars, they didn't have motorcycles, they didn't even have bicycles. Can you imagine that? Having to walk everywhere? Unless you were rich enough to own some camels or a horse or to have people carry you around in a litter, you know, care, um, to have slaves. But these guys were poor. They were poor fishermen, and so they had to walk. So it took them a few days to get back up there. And in the Gospel of Matthew, this is the, this is the first and actually only time that they will see Jesus. Um, so when they go back up, they get to Galilee, they see Jesus, and they bow down and they worship him. But some doubted. Some of them didn't believe, even though they were, look, they were looking at Jesus. At least in John uh, with Thomas, Thomas didn't see Jesus. Once Thomas saw with his eyes, he believed. But here are some of these disciples, they see Jesus and they still, they're not quite sure. They don't know if they should believe it or not. And the thing is, it's okay to have doubts. It's okay to have questions about our faith. And that's the beauty of God. That God is strong enough to handle when we have those moments of doubt and questions of our faith. And the, and the, it, it, and actually, those questions, those struggles, it only makes our faith stronger. When you think about it, when you, when you break a bone, what does your body do? 
it heals it. Now, okay, this is when you're younger, um, that it, it, it makes it stronger. There's actually extra bone around there that, that is formed to help make where it broke even stronger than before. And so for us, our faith is kind of like a bone when it gets broken. When we have questions, when we have doubt, whatever comes through on the other side is stronger than what we started with. And that does not change with age. So no matter how much, how often we question, every time we say, have a question about it and we are able to work through it, our faith is just a little bit stronger than it was before. And that doesn't change with time. And then Jesus gives to the disciples, gives them the great commission. Go therefore and make all disciples, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Glad he just said that for the disciples and not for us, right? No, it's intended for all of us. That we are to all go forth and make disciples of all nations, of all the people that we meet. Which I know is tough because many of us were told that we just, we, all we needed to do was to accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, and then that was good. That's it. But no, we are called to take it a step further, to share that gift that we have been giving. Um, our faith in Jesus, our faith in God, it's not a little box that we, that we tuck away Jesus in and in times of trouble we bring him out and say, oh, thank you for saving me, Jesus. No, it's something that we wear boldly and proclaim on ourselves all the time. It's it, Bible, studying the Bible, praying, worshiping. It's, it's all things that help us with, grow our, our own faith, but then we have to take it out and to share it with others. Because faith is not like a jewelry box. It's not a safe deposit box. It's not a savings account. It's not something that we store away for ourselves. We share it with others. It is a gift that we receive from God and that God then uses us to give it to others. Unfortunately, a lot of times we, have, we as Christians have used um, this commandment as a way to subjugate others. Um, think of the Crusaders. How they, you know, went in and, oh, we got to save Jerusalem. And, of course, that got twisted. Um, and also, the early um, explorers back in the 1500s, the damage that they did to the native populations by forcing them to convert. Rather than just letting the gospel work do its own work, they, had to, they, they felt that they had to beat it into people. And if they didn't accept it, then they would die. And the thing, I don't think God works in that way. I mean, f the gift of faith, it's not something that we stack up like bricks. Or to, um, it, it's more, faith is actually more like water. It's kind of always moving and flowing, isn't it? Um, it's flowing like a stream. Sometimes it's just a trickle. Sometimes a raging torrent. Sometimes it's just a nice, slow, lazy river to go tubing down. Other times, it's like class five rapids where you're in that raft and just holding on for dear life. But it is forever flowing through our lives and it strengthens and nourishes us. It gives us life. It gives us life. It, it's a gift from God. And Jesus is calling us to share that gift with others. Go therefore and give all peoples the gift that you have received. Give them the love that I pour out upon you. Pour it out upon them. Give them the grace that flows from me. Give them the forgiveness that I freely gave to you from the cross. Give them the freedom to love fearlessly. When you baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are giving them a new life. You are giving them life. And it, it, is, it can be scary to share our faith. Um, it can be scary to share it, to tell someone about that, isn't it? Uh, sometimes we do a poor job of teaching people how to share their faith, how to actually give words to what God has done for us. And these other people, they may not want to hear it. They may even try to hurt us for trying to show them 
a different and maybe even conceivably a better way to live. But Jesus tells us, Jesus gives us strength. Jesus gives us hope by saying, remember I am with you always to the end of the age. And who knows when the end of the age will come? I don't. It was a question that came up in Bible study. We came up with some different ideas was, well, maybe it's when Jesus comes again. Or maybe when we blow up our world, when, when, we, when human beings reach a point of extinction, uh, during the rapture, the Armageddon, or perhaps it's, it could even be something as simple as when we die. When our lives come to an end, um, Jesus is making a promise that he will be with us always and forever to the end of the age. That um, when we die, we have faith, that we have trust that, God, that Jesus will take us to God. That Jesus is going to take us up to heaven. That Jesus is going to take us home. Brothers and sisters, can I get an amen? Now, I know you're sitting at home. I know you're Lutheran. Come on, let's just do a good amen. Ready? Can I get an amen? Amen! Which means also, make it so. Amen, brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, join with us as, I, as we sing, Jesus Christ is risen today. And together with the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and in all places, praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Abiding God, you have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church as your followers to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to the oppressed and speak truth to the power of your prophets. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You come to us when we are lost and you hear our distress. We pray for those who suffer in any way, especially those who are suffering from COVID-19, those that care for the sick, and those whose lives who have been forever changed by this awful disease. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Your God, command, your commands are good and merciful. Give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises, to work for justice, advocate for the voiceless, and free the oppressed and imprisoned in mind, body, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, our healer and our hope, we lift up to you our concerns for the church, the world, and those we know to be in any kind of need, especially those that we now name before you either silently or out loud. And Lord, we ask you to be with those in need of healing. Be with Margie and Bonnie, Ron, Tiffany, Richard, Wyatt, Becky, Lon, Jane, Fran, Joel, and Marlene. Heal them, Lord. Give them strength. Watch over them. Protect them. And be with those of our members who are in living in care facilities. We ask you to bless Marlene, Becky, and Fran. Keep them strong. Give them strength, Lord. Watch over them always. Watch over all of us and protect us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these in all our prayers as we commend them to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all, and also with you. At this time, we will now offer up our first fruits to God. This is the time where we can go and uh, prepare our offering, whether it be through writing a check. Um, or just holding in our hands to bless it. Uh, we can also pull out our smartphones, our computers, laptops, whatever, um, and go to the website, ordallutheran.com. It's on the bottom of your screen there. And on there, there's a, a link for online giving. And it's you simply fill out this short little form, and you can give with either a check or uh, using a credit or a debit card. So I invite you to do now. Um, and to celebrate that, we are going to sing, Create Me a Clean Heart, O God. Brothers and sisters, I thank you so much for the gifts that you have bestowed upon this congregation. Thank you for keeping us in your prayers and uh, for supporting us with your prayers, with your monetary donations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it's just, it's amazing in this tr tr troubling time. We thank God for the gifts that we have been blessed. And now let us pray together our offering prayer. 
Blessed are You, O God, Ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day You shower us with blessings. As You have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise You and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Announcements, announcements, announcements. Uh, so, for announcements, this week we gave a trial run to our Zoom gatherings. Um, we tried on, on Sunday morning, we did a coffee hour, and then uh, we had Bible study, which we've been doing that for three weeks now. And also on Thursday, we did a morning coffee break and an afternoon coffee break. Um, the Thursday morning one, it was just myself and John Rubash. And funny enough, <laughs> we still managed to talk for almost an hour. So, um, and then we had a few more. We had six people, I think, at the afternoon one. So I invite you to join us. It's just nice to be able to see everyone else's face. I know you get to see my smiley mug all the time. Anytime you want to turn on YouTube, you get to see me. But I like to be able to see your face as well. Um, I miss you guys. And so uh, on here somewhere, I did send out an email with the, the information, the Zoom uh, meeting numbers, and also the passwords. Uh, the password is just simply Ardall, capital A, A, capital A, then the, lower, the rest are all lowercase, A-R-D-A-H-L. That's just simply the password to get in on those coffee hours um, for those even Zoom events. So I, I ask you to or invite you to join us. Um, also, we are looking for volunteers, people that would like to be on our prayer chain. Uh, I hate, to, I hesitate to use the word prayer warriors, but that's something else. That's another, that's what some other churches have called them. Uh, people that want to pray and we can do guided, we can give you guided prayers. We will also give you a list of people to pray for. Um, just it's, there's never enough prayers are there. And it's always great to have somebody praying for you. So let us know if you would like to help be part of that ministry to pray with and for others. And one other exciting thing. Uh, I just got an email earlier today from First Lutheran Church here in Bemidji. They are going to begin their drive-in worship service next Sunday, uh, the 24th at 10 a.m. They've do this in the sum they've been doing it for years in the summertime out at the fairgrounds. They're checking to see. I'll let you know um, as far as the actual location. We're hoping up there. Um, so, yeah. And all you do is you, you, you drive up in your car and you tune the radio station that they tell you to and you get to listen to the worship service. Um, there's a stage up there and you, get to, you'll be, and you just listen to the service on, on the radio in your car. You, and if you keep your windows up, you can sing as loud as you want. <laughs> Um, which brings me to another interesting point. Well, and with that, they are also inviting some of the other local congregations to join in. So I'm looking forward to being part of that. And thank you once again for continuing to send in your offering. Yeah, I can't tell you how much it helps. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. May the Lord bless you always. And now receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, join with us as we sing Amazing Grace.
Go in peace, serve the Lord.